We, as you guys have gone through perusal and all that, um, you know that we're talking about impulse and momentum now, okay? Um, and momentum, it, it really, it for, at least for me, it took me a while to get, like, the idea of what momentum was because it's, it's, like, it's really powerful, but if you just look at the typical basic information that you get, it's horrible. It's horrible. There's never really been a, for a while, I couldn't find, like, a good explanation of, like, what momentum really is. Um, because if you look in a dictionary, right, or if you look in the, the glossary of your textbook, you're going to find that the definition of momentum is the product of mass and velocity, well, you're like, gee, that's awesome, thanks. That really tells me what momentum is. If we take mass times velocity, now we have momentum. I fully understand what it is, right? right? At least with energy, it's the ability to do work. You can change, move something, right? Momentum, awesome. You've just told me that P is equal to MV. Hey, sweet. You know what I mean? <laughs> Right, right. So now we're all experts in momentum. So, really upset about so, like it literally, it really took me, really getting this. Really took me until my junior year of college, when we finally said uh, another another kid and I went to one of our professors and said, "What is momentum?" Right, like what actually is momentum? Because clearly, it's not the product. Well, it is the product of mass and velocity, but it's not helping me. Right. Um, so, really, the best way to think about it is it's inertia in motion. Okay? So, that means momentum is a way to explain objects that are in motion. Okay? And the really cool thing is, is that when you talk about momentum, you have really two of Newton's laws wrapped up inside of it. Okay, so the, moment, the, the two of Newton's laws really help to explain what momentum is. All right? Or you could even look at it as the Newton's laws are a way of combining and getting momentum to help explain it. Okay? Um, so the way we can start, and before we get there, we, momentum is P. can't call it M because mass is M. That's why I, I don't know where they come up with some of these letters. P just seemed to make sense. Okay, great. Um, so we got P equals MV. Okay? Now, this is really important. It is a vector. So really, we should be doing that. We should be putting the, the vector symbols on top of it. So the direction of a velocity, it matters. It's very important. right? And typically, we've always said that to the right is positive and to the left is going to be negative. And we're going to keep that. All right? Um, just a brief aside, well, well, we'll talk collisions later, but just a brief aside. In your reading, you talked about two-dimensional collisions. Yeah. We will not be worrying about that. Okay? Um, so these are pretty much the basics of it. So where does it come from? Right? How do we get there? All right? So if we, what we'll do is we'll start... Actually, I don't want to write it like that. With Newton's second law, where the net force is equal to m times a. And this is something my high school physics teacher never showed me. Right? Again, it wasn't until I took analytical mechanics my junior year of, of college that you know, they're like, oh, it's just, you, know, you can get momentum from Newton's second law. Okay? So if we go here, right, we know that really acceleration is the change in speed divided by time. Okay? And if we just change it a little bit, okay, m times v is momentum, right? Yeah. Okay. So we can call it delta p divided by t. Okay. So what you've got here is really when you're talking about Newton's second law, and we're saying that you know a net force is going to cause a mass to accelerate. Really, what we're also able to say is that a net force is changing the momentum of an object. Does that make sense? Right? And that's pretty cool. This is almost like a, a more fundamental definition of what forces or net, what net forces or Newton's second law 
is saying that a change in, I'm sorry, net force causes a change in momentum or is equal to a change in momentum. Now, if you're talking, you know, like big boy physics, you're not writing F net equals delta P over T. You'd actually write dP dt, right? So then we're talking derivatives. Um, so we're not, we won't worry about that. But that's, this, is, this is a much bigger definition or more accurate definition of, of uh, Newton's second law, right? We talk about it in terms of derivatives instead, okay? Are we good? So we're good so far, all right? So what we're going to do, so we see that momentum now really has to do with force, okay? Oops, that's fine, actually. So let's go back to this Newton's second law again, where we've got F net equals MA, okay? And we're going to change it around again a little bit. So we get now F net equals M, right, delta V over T. I'm going to bring this T over here because I want to look at just the momentums, all right? I'm going to look at the momenta, all right? I want to look at those. So we've got F net T equals M delta V. All right? Or T equals M V sub F minus M V sub I. So what I've done is I'm, I got the momentum by itself, right? And then we know that delta V is actually final minus initial, okay? And then I just distributed it around. This is really important, okay? Just by looking at this equation, Newton's second law, we've come up with two major things, right? That first Newton's second law is really um, about momentum. It's about, real, we'll see the conservation of momentum. But also, we kind of figure this out, and it kind of makes sense, right? Now it's just, it's mathematically um, supported now, or uh, confirmed, right? We know that if we push on something for a long period of time, we're going to speed it up a lot, right? We're going to change its speed quite a bit. That makes sense, right? Okay? Where if we push on something for a small amount of time, we're not going to change its speed as much. And that's kind of what this is saying, right? That if we push on something for a long period of time, we're going to cause its speed to change or its momentum to change, right? That's really what our equation is doing for us. Now, what's really important, this has a, a lovely name that you'll see all over the place sometimes. It's called the impulse momentum theorem, okay? So really what they're doing is they're relating impulse to momentum. Now, what is, mo what is impulse? Okay. What is impulse? If we go up to here, right, we're going to call this F net T thing impulse. And it's equal to the change in momentum. Okay. So impulse is a change in momentum. Momentum is kind of a contri not contrived, but it's kind of like a made-up thing, right? It's a term to explain something, right? Because they I mean they call it mass times the product of mass and velocity is momentum, so they're just putting that together and calling it momentum. Impulse is the same thing, right? We see this ft. These are two fundamental quantities, right? Force and time are two fundamental quantities, but when we put them together, we're like, well, you know what? These two things are very important, and they're multiplied together. If they were, they we need to pay attention to it. So let's give it a name. And they gave it the name of impulse. Okay. Does that make sense? Okay. Another time when you just got to use some random letter. We can't call it I because I later on down the road stands for electric current. Right? Impulse is equal to FT. J. F net. J is, yeah, J is a when we're talking units of something, it's joules. But yeah, when we're talking about a quantity, it's yeah, but there's J and J. It's J. F net, yes. It's like yeah, yeah, because we had F net over here, yeah. right? So it goes yeah. along for the ride. 
Okay. What's that? Lowercase p. <laughs> All right. Now, a really important thing, and it's and it's helpful, and it's and you'll see this quite a bit, is that for an f versus t graph, right? The area under the graph is equal to your impulse. Which is then your change in momentum, right? It's your delta MV, or, or your delta P. We could call it that as well. Okay. Now, momentum is really, really powerful. It's it's just as powerful as conservation of energy. Okay. Um, so, if you understand energy, you understood energy, and you guys did very well on the on the last test, right? Momentum is going to be kind of the same way. Okay, um, and this is kind of the basics of it. And when we move on to what really momentum is about, when we talk about things smashing each other, um, you know, collisions, it works the same way. Where you know we have some energy to start with, we have some energy to end with, right? What's solve a problem using that? Momentum will be the same thing. These objects have momentum to start with; they have momentum to end with. What happens in between, or how can we use that to solve? Okay, so we have conservation of energy. We'll also have conservation of momentum. Does that make sense? But the big thing here, again, is that impulse is a change in momentum, okay? And momentum is really inertia in motion. So clearly, in motion is very important, right? Or mass in motion. And so if you're not in motion, you don't have any momentum, okay? So that's why this in motion part becomes super important, okay?